another beautiful Sunday night with Positive Vibes, maybe, maybe, PVM The Talk Show. I'm your host, Dante Dash Smith, about to be joined shortly by the fam, the crew, as we unpack tonight's topic, which is dating and relationships, you know, reality versus the image we uphold in our minds of how the relationship should unfold. So guys... I hope you guys brought your gems to share, to unpack with us. Tonight's going to be a beautiful conversation. Like I said, I got the whole family in the building with me. I got Jetty, I got Alicia, I got Namadi, and I got Jared. The whole gang from last week, we got to unpack a good one tonight. Ooh, how y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? So, um, before we get into tonight's episode, and before, before everyone tags in, you know, let me just pay the bills, you know, shout out a few things that's going on. With the team, you know. So first and foremost, next Saturday, March 18th, Positive Vibes Maybe PBM Talk Show will be on site at the Imperfect Art Gallery for their Ramba Festival and Art Showcase. They're going to be showcasing different artists, the new art exhibits. It's going to be food. It's going to be liquor. It's going to be smoke friendly. It's going to be a good vibe. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, specifically Germantown Avenue, 5539 Germantown Avenue that is stop by. It's gonna be real good. It's gonna be a good vibe. It's gonna be it's gonna be something to be worth enjoy enjoying. So tap into that. Um also on March 19th, out in New Jersey, PVM, we're gonna be at a showcase. I'm gonna post the event flyer up in the PVM stories t- this evening, but we're gonna be helping host uh open mic. So tap in for that as well. You know, we're going to be interviewing the guests there as well as the hosts. It's going to be a lot of different artists, poets, rappers, singers. So stay tuned for that. Look out for that flyer that's going to be up in the PVM stories tonight. That's right. Tonight it's going to be up in the PVM stories. That way you guys can purchase your tickets. The ticket link is at Eventbrite and the link will be in our stories as well. So you'll be able to purchase your tickets. It's only $10 dollars. Come out, support, have a good time, have a good vibe, you know. You know how we do. You know how we turn up. So, also, you know, guys, I got smoothies on sale for $5. Tap in with Fly and Mouth Catering, you know. Uh, Delivery is an option as well, you know. I got fruit smoothies that's good for your weight loss. That's good for your weight gain. I got smoothies with dragon fruit. Uh, mango, pineapple, watermelon. So tap in, tap in. You know, they're nutritious, they're delicious. Definitely going to enjoy them. So, you know, now that we got that out the way, let me just send the invitations out to the fam. Get them all up in here, you know. Everybody. Well, I mean, you know, it's really, you know, um, it's that Sunday, it's that Sunday flow. You know, we all was dragging a little bit. And, but... We all energized for this episode. I'll tell you that, though. Now, uh... Oh, hold on. Hold on. There we go. Now I got those invitations sent out. There we go. Also, okay, there go Alicia. Guys, when whenever y'all ready, send y'all invites, and then I bring y'all in. Um, I'm just warming up the audience until then, so take y'all time. Whenever y'all ready, I'm ready. Ooh, the gang is all falling in, so, you know, it might not be too long after. after. Ah, I'm all on top. But, like I was saying, guys, purchase y'all smoothies, you know, definitely tap in to fly them out, you know, place them orders in today. And, um, tap in with Jetty, because he, he is selling artwork, you know, get your paintings, get your pictures, talk to the artist, create something exciting and decorative. For your household, tap in with my brother. He got he 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 a wizard with the pen, you know. So definitely tap in and support him as well. Also, his lady does phenomenal tea. So, guys, if you're if you're a tea connoisseur or you're just looking for something warm and delicious at the end of a a long hard working day, tap in with her for a delicious cup of I mean a delicious cup of tea, you know. What a special treat too. Some of them are definitely blended with the CBD to get you just perfectly relaxed, you know, so definitely tap in. We got a lot of things here over at PB. The Twitter and the Instagram, you know, like you don't want to miss things that's coming on. I'm keeping everything up abreast 
as far as new updates, new videos, new posts. So definitely tap in, be subscribed to the YouTube channel for all things new with PVL. Am I, how are you feeling, love? Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Am I coming in clear? Yeah, it's weird because you were on my Bluetooth, but then when my phone connected, it took it off of Bluetooth, which was annoying. It's the, you know, it's just the, it's just the side effects of technology, you know. They got to give you, like, the slightest bit of the hassle to let you know. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> How is this Sunday coming along? Besides, you know, the trouble that you experienced earlier. Hold on just a second. Okay. What was what did you say? I said, how's your Sunday coming along for you? Outside it's of been rough, you, just... you know. I was supposed to be driving up to New York, which I am, but I left the house at like 11. I've been, my tire blew out when like I was half an hour away from where I was supposed to be. So then I was stuck in the middle of Pennsylvania somewhere trying to get a new tire. Finally left at like four. So. Since you're having tire trouble, but you know, but I mean, luckily you're okay though. You know, you're on the road now. Uh, Dad, so. this this may not work because you're not coming in because of the reception. Because I'm in the mountains right now, so the reception's yeah. really bad. Yeah, this might. I'm be sorry, helpful. but I I hope you guys have a great show. Oh, thank you, Namar. And you get home safely, I'll tap in with you a little later. Thank you. I'll connect and we'll have another discussion about this sometime. That's a bet. All right. Uh, you be safe, though. You too. Thanks. So we're going to say bye to Namari for now, guys. But uh, as we speak, I'm trying to bring in Jetty and Alicia. So hey. just be patient with me, guys. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Joe. How are you feeling? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, P. Yes, how y'all so living? Much, uh, baby. How you feeling? How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. It's, it's been a pretty relaxed day. You know, I'm trying to prepare myself for the work week tomorrow. You know how that goes. <laughs> well, um, I understand all too well. The, the grind be real. Uh, I can't wait to... I can get a full-time remote position. Until then, <laughs> we're going to work with what we got. And I'm a little excited because Friday is my youngest son's uh, first dance. So, you know, okay. it's my right, right. So we excited. It's, it's, a real, it's a real dance. He, and he's even got a little date. So I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Okay. So is he wearing like a little suit or a tux too? Yeah, we got a little suit. We made sure to get um, to get her little precise to match her dress. And this is his plate. This is his, his plate. My my girlfriend's granddaughter, so they know each other. We got family tickets, and my older son didn't want to go, so we were like, he needs somebody that he can, you know, party with and have fun with. So that worked out. Me and Dad are just going chaperone. That's yeah, what's up. You know. Yeah, that could be a little bit embarrassing at times, you know. Even the cool parents, you know, the kids still be wanting that little separation. Be like, you know, let me do my thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we we just did it, sir. I got some more maturity to do. My kid can't tell, some, tell me that. My baby can't tell me that. I'll be like, what thing you got to do? What thing you got to do? <laughs> uh uh. Oh man. Hey, what's going you guys on with you? What's good with y'all brothers, man? Just over How are you over chilling. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm just trying to relax and enjoy the rest of this Sunday, man. Have a good, have, catch some good vibes on the uh, Good Vibes Maybe podcast. Hey. Positive, yes. positive vibes, maybe. Positive vibes, maybe. Let me not mess up the brand. Exactly. Let me not mess up the brand. They worked hard for this. We're not going right to do that. On. Right on. Right <laughs> on. The great vibes, you know. You fell in love by when you had the conversation. Let me take these things off. 
Yeah, don't mind me, guys. I'm just finishing up dinner, so. Hey, I'm look, as you finish what? finishing up dinner, bro, what led you to bringing up this topic in the first place? Um, this is actually a topic. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, Daddy, because this was actually a conversation I was having with uh, a couple of my coworkers, you know. Um, we was listening to The Breakfast Club, and who was a young man. Why would you do that? listen to The Breakfast Club? Oh, you know, I, I, need my, I need my daily dose of ratchetness in the morning, you know. It's just, it's just gonna feel... <laughs> 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 you know, I need a little something, you know. I just can't be too positive all the time. I need a little negativity, you know, a little, a little toxicity, you know. Just, just to need, keep it off need that balance. Soul. You need a little, little, little bit of toxicity. Got you, got you. Mm -hmm. You know, balance it out, you know. <laughs> That's what the yin yang for, the good and the bad, you know. <laughs> But we were listening to Young Miami have a discussion on there to talk about singleness and how she can't really be in a full relationship or committed to anybody because everyone is, you know, uh, assessed with infidelity at this point. And she was going on talking about how more people in relationships are, are well, experience infidelity than the single people. And that kind of led to a conversation with upstairs, Young Miami. Thank you. My nephew is about to give y'all a whole drum class. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to little homie, man. <laughs> that led to the conversation about um, relationships, you know, as far as like, uh, why do single people lust for the relationships while most people in relationships are less than to be single, you know? And that kind of just started sparking more and more questions about like, why well, I wanted to ask couples in relationships as opposed to people that were single. It kind of Figure out what's the divide between the ideal relationship versus reality, you know, and see where do we, you know, where where do things wires cross? Where this idea of how the relationship goes is differentiates from most cases how it actually is. So, hmm. Am, am I, do I see what you're asking? I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel so far removed from this stuff. Like I feel so far removed. I be I'm from like a, a observer. Yes. When I see these podcasts, yes. I'm like I be watching and I be trying to understand. And I, I I go back in my mind to the days of when I was single, and I be like, and maybe it's because I'm you know older. Mm -hmm. I'm almost forty, so. My my heydays is behind me, right? <laughs> so maybe things were just and not that the nonsense and the toxicity didn't exist because it certainly did, but um, I don't know. Like I I wasn't lusting to be in a relationship when I was single, mm -hmm. and I, as a married person, I'm not lusting to be single. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like so, it, it's weird for me I, when I hear these conversations. I always respect everybody's perspective, but that's not my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think we talked before about like enjoying, um, like there was aspects of singlehood that we enjoy. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. I, yeah, but it's I, actually craving that. I, I mean, the, I think the people who are craving that are in bad relationships. I don't think people mm. in healthy relationships had them desires. Yeah. Facts. Or Facts. if you are one person in a duo. Who is craving that? That means you got something unhealthy within you. Yep. And that's not necessarily that your relationship is bad. The problem might lie within that one singular person, uh -huh. um, which can then, of course, lead into a bad relationship where you got somebody who's not ready to meet their partner halfway and do the work. Isn't it the same thing, though? Not necessarily. It's because if, you, if you're in a relationship and you feel like that, isn't it something but wrong I don't with relationship? No, I think it's if and your partner not, it's, it depends on if your partner is if you're no, because if your partner is a good partner, right? And you can openly admit that because I've heard this. I've heard I've heard these scenarios where people are like, It's not you know, he's he's good to me, he does A, B, and C. It's me. And I've heard that from both the male and female perspective. Yeah. It's me. So that means that, that's not a relationship problem. That's a you problem. Yeah, <laughs> if but, you got something good and you there's something within you, you can't put that on your partner. Yeah, but if you're if you're the negative side of things, then it's you're the, making the overall you will, relationship if, if you don't address it, yes, you will. It'll seep out like poison. Bad association spoils you for habits. We know that. It's like one bad apple will spoil the bunch. But if you 
recognize that within yourself and, and you're not willing to do the work. If you stay in that relationship, absolutely, you will make it worse. But if you can recognize it and address it, it doesn't have to go that way. But there has to be an acknowledgement of there's something within me. I if think... it's not, especially if you can look at it and be like, this is not an issue with my partner. This is something that I'm craving. You you got to figure out why. But hold on, but can somebody be good for you and you just not be ready to be good for them? Absolutely. And like, if that's yeah, the case, don't let the relationship go bad. Get end it. End it. <laughs> just say yeah, enough. No, you not you, you add caveats onto it. I, we just speaking about the state of it. But but that's what I'm saying. It doesn't mean the relationship is bad. It means that I've reached a point where I don't think this. I'm ready to be in this relationship. It doesn't mean it's a bad relationship. It means I got some things I got to work through, and I'd rather nip it in the bud before it gets to that point. I'm not saying you're People, wrong about that, that, but I think I think. The there are people I've seen do that. Um, Wait, unfortunately, sorry, it's sorry, not a maturity that happens right. often. Right. I was about <laughs> to say, Dad, did you ask, do people do that? The fact that you ask that means that there is a group of people, not excluding yourself, but no, to I, ask I never that, it. that is fucking crazy. You never experienced but it's somebody. Real. How many times have you seen people stay in relationships? For various yeah, reasons, people, right? A lot. A lot. And that means yeah. married people, people dating. Um, prime example, you got people who stayed for the kids, right? We hear that all the time, whether it's marriage or whether it's baby mama, baby daddy situation. Um, there are people who will stay out of, we've talked about this before, complacency, comfortability, um, for all sorts of reasons. Never never a good enough reason. If, you're, if your main reason isn't because... I love you and I want to work on this relationship because we got to understand the relationships are work. If your main reason is not that I want to see this through because I love you that much and I see us having a future, if it's not either of those things, you it, it's not going to be what you want it to be. But there okay. are people who will say, so how many people do we know that cheat, serially cheat in relationships? It happens. That's what I know. That's what I, I know. That's why I'm kind of honestly scared to be in a relationship at this point because I see so many relationships where instead of like walking away people would just be like you know what I've invested so much time in this person or I'm so comfortable around this person I'd rather just cheat get whatever I need from somebody else and still come home to this person because at least I got this building up for balance treat it like, like a place holder until the better thing comes along Jetty, yes <laughs> Go ahead, Jackie. I, I appreciate it. No, no, that's cool. That's why I, I just take it back. I'll let y'all cook. Look. <laughs> I'll have me when you do, teacher. I'll be waiting. You know what I'm saying? We got a nip sign in the butt. AP, you said something really key, and I've heard this so many times, and it's real, but I feel that because it's something that we use as a popular narrative that connects to a, an integral truth, it needs to be broken down, and it needs to be dissected. This this notion, which is true, don't get me wrong, but it needs to be broken down of a relationship needs work. So my issue with that statement as a standstill is how much work are we putting into the relationship? You know what I'm saying? Like I I go to I go to work for nine hours, right? Eight hours and then an hour lunch break, but I'm nine hours away from home. You know what I'm saying? I come home my lady understands that I've been working hard labor for nine hours, yet I'm still expected to be present here as her partner, as mm -hmm. her father. So that that's it's, that's a, its own world over there. You know what I'm saying? But I've still invested nine hours into that world. I cannot allow my investment of nine hours to take away from my investment here that I only give an hour or two. And I'm just right. like, you know what? You 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 got you got her for the rest of the night, or you know I need my alone space for five hours, or you know you know what I'm saying, like because mm -hmm. technically that's still work. I still came home and I still work, but what's the quality of the work that I'm putting in when I do come Absolutely. home after these duties and responsibilities have been met on the other side? It, 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 uh, um, do you think you never? You never allowed those moments like that, though. Like you said, um, you you work, you come home, you got to invest the, the time and your energy in the home. It, aren't there times where people in relationships should be allowed, allowed though, like almost a, 
it's it's work, right? So at, at jobs, you take a mental health day sometimes. Like, don't you need a mental health break sometimes, even in your relationship? Like, and it has nothing to do with your partner or how you feel about them, but it's just like, yo, maybe the day that I just had that did put me through a mill. Like, I'm I'm so tight right now. I need to I need to decompress. Like, I can't be who you need me to be until I take this time. To, to clear my head and then I can come back and I can give you what you deserve. Yes, I agree. We do we do deserve it. It's either side of the fence. Yeah. The man, the woman, the mother, the father, the husband, the wife, whatever. Either side of the fence, we are allotted that and I feel being in a relationship, one partner one partner's responsibility is to make sure that they allow a, a facilitation of that for their partner in case that should be the case, you know? I feel that the the nuance that is um that is a real deadly line to tap dance on is how much of an advantage you take in terms of your partner's understanding and just how much you lean onto those mental health days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like but that, oh, no, you have, ahead, you have, no 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 I'm sorry. I didn't want this comment to disappear. Princess on this, I'm sorry for mispronouncing that. You made a good point, Jetty, but most people don't do that and operate under that understanding. That is understandable, but these things need to be communicated without the other person internalizing. I think that is chef's kiss perfect. That communication is key, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Communication and comprehension are key. You can't have one yeah, without the other. You can communicate to the yeah. cows come home, but if they don't comprehend, it's going to be a whole different story. So, yes, communicating to your partner effectively and letting them know what your needs are, and then having a partner who can comprehend that, and then y'all both, first of all, communicating with each other about your needs, right? Because y'all both have needs, and hoping and praying that I love my partner enough to not try to take advantage in a way that so I can, you know, take more time for myself. Because uh, if I'm doing that, sure. that's something, hey, cousin, that's something that um, that speaks lying to my selfishness and that's something that would need to be addressed because we we've talked about it before there's no room for selfishness in any relationship any healthy relationship no healthy marriage relationship. dating or otherwise if there's selfishness you got a problem mm -hmm. you got a problem once you were deciding to put your life together with somebody else and unite in that way it is no longer you've become one yep. it is no longer a, a so that has to go out the window there is individuality to a certain extent, but the bigger unit is y'all are a unit. <laughs> the bigger picture is y'all are a unit. So there should always be that. And I shouldn't want to take away from you in a selfish manner. If I'm doing that, then something I, I need I, I need to be looking inward and saying, why do I feel like I don't want to give my partner their their due? And that's probably what's leading them people in relationships who aren't getting that to feel like they want to be single again. Yes, Jetty. <laughs> Yo, Go ahead, oh, yo, I love y'all so much. Oh, I gotta, oh, I gotta burn a question for all three of y'all, including everybody in the comment section right now. So, with that being said, something so key when you're in a relationship, let's say married, right? When you're married, two become one, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, there's no space for selfishness in the marriage, right? So, would it be too far fetched? Now, check me if I'm tripping, y'all. Everybody listening, including Dash, J, A, P, check me if I'm tripping or just lend y'all your gems of wisdom to the matter so that we can get down to the vineyard of this. But would it be too much or too far-fetched to assume that the boyfriend-girlfriend dynamic is destined to be toxic because there is no oneness? It's just two selfish mm -hmm. people that just want to... You know what I'm saying? Oh, I just want to finagle. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Because yeah. this, this comes with, I, and I get, and I, I know what I'm about to say. It's about to sound real old school. <laughs> but I, that's okay. I'll eat that. Um, but this is about whether what your intent is with dating, right? Mm -hmm. People, there are people who are raised to date with intent. I certainly was. I was always raised to date with the intent of marriage. I was never raised to date just to be dating and having fun. That was not how I was raised. And when I tried it, because <laughs> I did try it, because I'm a little hard-headed, um, I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't fulfilled. I, you know, it was temporary. It was fleeting. So 
how you're dating matters. If you're dating with the intent of becoming one, then your mindset is already going to be geared towards that. I'm preparing for the future of us being a union. If you are not doing that, absolutely. If you your if your thoughts are this is just my boyfriend, this is just my girlfriend, we're you know, we're together, but we're not together. If you still say things like I have mine, he has his, and we got separate bank accounts and that you ain't you, then no, you're not a you're not a unit yet. You're not a unit. You're not a part you're not a partnership in the way that you think you are. Um if you're not dating with that mindset of partnership, yes, it's just two selfish people spending time together. And not not in a negative way, but if your intent is not to go there. Y'all are just spending time. It doesn't mean that you're building something just because you're dating someone and they're your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Mm. What is your intent? So even though even though we don't subscribe to this, what does that mean for the people who say, I want the commitment without the marriage title, paperwork, all of that? Like, Because there's a lot of people out yeah. there that exist that do not, believe in marriage like the yeah. anti-marriage yeah. they feel like marriage changes things which it which it, it does. definitely does and it should but for all those people that want to be in long-term committed relationships without the marriage do we believe that they can ever be successful in that format i don't i think because i think that's different than what i think for me i don't i don't know and i would never purport to know i know based on my belief system that wouldn't work for me, we just speaking in general. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, but I, I wouldn't know. But I, I know people who have been in long-term relationships over. I, I follow people who have been in relationships 10, 15 years. They're not married. They're just committed to one another. Yeah, mm. like that. If like, you ever have a aunt, an uncle who wasn't really like officially married or something okay. like that, yeah. but they've been together for like thirty years. Yeah, yeah. 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 forever. I think we all um, have one in the black community. Like, and. We, everybody that think has somebody in their family who who's done the long term. Um, for me, and I think again, this is really based upon your values and what you believe in are going to kind of dictate how you view relationships. Um, oh, she going in? Hold on, hold on. Um, Princess said relationships yeah. are not always fifty fifty, and that's okay. But your partner needs to not take advantage. Whoever's providing the majority fact, dating. Where the purpose is key, and that's the issue in the current society. People are dating for that temporary fix of occupying time. I I tend to agree with that just based on these podcasts, right? We know that everybody got a podcast and hearing these podcasts, these relationship podcasts and the and the male versus female uh rhetoric and narrative. When I hear people, I hear a lot of what this other gender isn't doing for me. Uh, they're not what is, what did you bring to the table cuz i know what i bring to the table and then i'm waiting to hear what everybody brings to the table but they nobody talk about what they bring to the table they just talking about what they want brought to the table they tell you they is the they or i am the table and i'm just like <laughs> okay but what's going on it i don't i don't understand i don't i don't want to sit at the table but and i think princess is absolutely right um it's occupying your time and i will say this i was a, a selfish Dater, if you want to call it that. I went on dates, you know, I messed with guys. I did not, because you know what it is? When I start to care and I find myself starting to give of myself and it's not reciprocated, mm. I really got to think about am I mad because they're not reciprocating the energy I'm giving or am I mad because we never agreed to that mm. in the first place because we both just dating. There was no conversation about intent, what we doing purpose and even more so i'm gonna say it because i was one of these people and i see it a lot some of us get in relationships with people who tell you flat flat out who they are yeah. and you just think well if i ride long enough they're gonna change their mind yeah. and they're gonna they're gonna become the person i want them to be because they i'm gonna love them so good uh -uh. Uh -uh. they're gonna be a different person uh -uh. when a person shows you who they are after they've told you who they are uh -uh. and you expect something different well a lot of us male and female we get in these relationships, like she said, occupying time because we we desire this company of this person, and we think that if we if we stick around long, if they're gonna become who we want them to be, when in all reality they may not ever become that because it's not what they want it to be in the first place. But if we're not having those conversations and we're not being honest with ourselves and each other, you gonna just be occupying time with another person yep. with no intent and purpose. Yeah, I blame Disney. You blame Disney. I blame Disney. I blame Disney. I'm, I'm, yo, you think it's a game? Every I want to hear this. Disney yeah, plot. The, every single Disney plot heralds a certain protagonist, right? And a love interest. 
and mm -hmm. some type of some type of um some type of obstacle that would in otherwise in a logical world prevent said love interest from mm -hmm. getting with the protagonist. Like let's say Little Mermaid. Let's just put Little Mermaid for example. You know what I mean? Little Mermaid is a story about a mermaid who had it made as a princess of a kingdom, sold her soul for some legs. <laughs> Literally, signed a contract and everything with a demon underlord. <laughs> Got some legs just so she could walk the <laughs> earth with the man that she don't know nothing about. The song one or two times was like, oh my god. <laughs> Yo, Disney, the plots Disney be fuck oh, is look, look at Sleeper Beauty. Look at Sleeper look at Beauty, Beauty, Beauty and the Beast. It's she she sick, fell in love. With her, with her, with her prison guard, <laughs> who, who she wasn't even attracted to. Y'all going down the deep. Look, look, no, 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 no. He, he's, he's making a very valid point. You are. I think but a very valid a, we point. could do have a whole hour just on how crazy those stories are. <laughs> not to mention the origins of all those stories. Because yeah. Disney ain't do nothing but steal other people's ideas and run with but, it. But but I think the, the I think what he the they point, the point is old school topic how too. how a lot of the how media and entertainment affects our view, right? Mm -hmm. What we consume, what we eat, whether it is media, reading, videos, whatever, it plays an integral, an integral part in how we're going to view relationships, starting with right. the relationships we see in our own homes, yeah. right? So if you grow up with two parents in the household, whether it's healthy or non-healthy, the, the effect is going to be there, right? Whether you have a single mom or a single dad raising some children, or you got aunties and uncles you're close with, the relationships around you that you see growing up are going to shape how you view relationships, whether you want it to or not. Everybody's impacted by what they've seen as a child. And somewhere in the back of your mind, um, subconsciously, you're already building this idea. Here's how real it is, right? Love my parents to death. However, they did not have a healthy relationship. And it was so much so that I was telling Jay the other day, I never saw a marriage in my future. You know, most of the girls are planning their weddings and drawing their dresses and, and all that stuff. Do you know, so I didn't even want to have kids. I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. There's never any, oh, yeah, what even is going in my mind, because I was, you know, watching TV, I thought my life was going to be sex in the city. I thought I was going to be Al McBill. I was going to be an attorney, <laughs> living in my, in my brownstone, living my best life, having drinks with my girlfriends. The idea of a man even being present wasn't even a fuck. In fact, in my mind, the limits of boyfriends were relegated to high school and college. That is what my mind thought. It's like, oh, I'll date in high school. I have a boyfriend here and there. I'll go to college. I have a boyfriend here and there. There was never any, like, and the perfect man, and this is what my dress is going to look like, and it's going to... I wasn't even thinking about marriage. Marriage was not for me. I, and, I, and as I got older, when I landed here, because God knows I landed here, it was not intentional. I'm not just going to hold you. I was taken aback by my own desire for marriage. I was taken aback for my own desire to have that nuclear family because I didn't want it based on what I had gone through growing up. My mind changed over time. There was evolution there. There was as I got older, other influences, being able to see other relationships and then just being in a relationship myself that wasn't necessarily healthy to begin with, but as we grew and we worked on ourselves as individuals and then worked as a partnership, it got healthy. But I didn't see marriage for myself and I realized how much of that was affected by what I saw as a kid. I had no desire for it. It was so much not a desire that I wasn't that little girl who was like, on my wedding day, I'm going to... None of it. I didn't want it. Yeah. wasn't even a problem. Plan. So what we see, I think growing up, TV made it look good. I think somebody just did a post recently about um, a different world. I don't know if y'all watched that growing up. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. how toxic Whitney and uh, Kadeem yeah, Hardison right. really were. What was the character's yeah. name? Wayne Wayne. Wayne, Wayne. Wayne, How Wayne, toxic Wayne. they he was, but we was rooting for him, right? Uh -huh. As an adult looking back, I'm like, no, Whitney, run. Go the other direction. Like, even the things we see in media, they make that struggle love look real good. <laughs> they make it seem like that's the norm, and it's not. <laughs> it's but, not. But, but hold on, hold on, hold on. You, we we going to go down this hole now, because how, 
Why was he so foul though? Like because if I remember a different world, he he was feeling her. No, he and she wasn't. had a yes, he was. He was feeling her, and she had a dude when she got rid of her. Dude, well, let me help you out here. I just rewatched the whole he series. I just rewatched the whole series. In the beginning, he did not like her. All they did was beef and go at it. He was physically. No, I'm not talking about like the first. But no, but I'm talking about that. Like, like, but then he dated her. Played it to the left, wasn't ready. He had nothing to offer, wanted her to give up to help him invest in his dreams. Played it to the left some more. He didn't get himself together until she was with somebody who was prepared and ready for her. Then he had the nerve to show up at a wedding and interrupt it. Selfish, 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 selfish. Selfish. It still had nothing to offer. Yeah, but she broke up his relationship with the, the, the Asian bro. Did, didn't she? Oh. You go back and watch that stuff. <clears throat> but all I'm saying is that whole back and forth, he, he wanted something. He And then he belittled her a lot throughout that relationship, called her bougie, called her all these sorts of things. And she was this, that, the third. When she was who she was, either you going to get on her level, why you got to break her down to get her to where you want her to be? Damn. Well, See, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Toxic down, down, right. If you're just dating a fact, uh -huh. down, if it's true, uh -oh. like, or is that just a nod if, to like a If she is bougie, it. And that's her lifestyle, and that's why does she have to change that to be with you? Either See, you like her for who she is, a, or you don't. Like the corn, it sounds a lot like the corny conversation now. Yeah. And I would say the same for her. She wanted him to be somebody he wasn't. Yeah. I stopped trying to be with people who aren't ready to be who you wanted to be. But hold on, that's a good point, though. But, and that's why I say shows like that, they made it look real good, because in the end, the person ended up, but I don't want that. <laughs> but isn't that kind of like the grosser relationships too a little bit like where you, you kind of meet and you it's like this back and forth compromise is one and thing then you, you but learn to accept each other's differences. that's only if you accept it right yeah, if you accept if you accept it not i'm going to continue to go and push for you to be who i want you to be like i'm just going to keep sleep sl slipping little suggestions to you yeah. well you could you could do this you could do that but you could be end, better here but mm -hmm. i'm saying like mm -hmm. in the end they, they made both wanted each other to be different right but at the end they had had to learn to accept each other's differences. Yeah, and that's yeah. how they got the like they yeah, 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 yeah. So re rewatch that show. I'm just we that's gonna be an assignment and then we'll talk about it after because I rewatched it recently. You you just go back and watch it. We'll I watched it my whole life. Like I tried it's been a while. Okay. <laughs> now, I love you, but it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while, sir. I watched it you, every you week let, you let, time. Listen, listen, but looking at it through the lens as an adult who is now married and in a healthy relationship, go back and watch Watch it now. Nah, then we're going to be putting thing. all this 2023 no, uh, sensitivity on top of it, too. Like, I'm, Go to your corner. Like, everything, everybody is so PC, <laughs> and they, they feelings get hurt over everything. Mm -mm, it's not, it's not about that. It's, it's not about that. Now you're going to be up here on PBM trying to explain why we're getting divorced, because you, you already... <laughs> You talking about No, I'm just I'm joking. No, no, no. We, you, we, we talking about a lot of sensitive areas. No, no, no. This ain't about PC. I'm just talking about general what the effect is of entertainment and media. Unfortunately, things get glorified that should not be glorified. And then people up here feeling like, I want that. Sh I No, no. And as an adult who has done the struggle part of love, love you to death, and has been in those toxic relationships, I don't want it. And if I could go back and change certain things, absolutely, I would go on with a different approach. Because, again, we're so affected by the things that we consume. Think about it. Some of my, I ain't going to hold you, some of my favorite songs is toxic. If you listen to the lyrics, they're the best, they the best ones. But, you know, oh, you, we don't even think about it. We're playing them while we speak. We're singing them out loud. We ah, at, the of, at the top of your lungs. But what are you, what are you feeding on? They be the best jobs, like, Think about it. all the Mary J. Blige songs that she was hitting the pipe or whatever she was hitting. She she was in her feelings. She had to struggle <laughs> love. She, and we and we felt it and we related to it. All of the worst some some of SZA's best songs is all about her being in toxic relationships. I love you a little bit of SZA. But let's be real here. When we're consuming those things, right, we start to kind of romanticize those ideas because then it makes us feel like it's okay. Like, yeah, so and so sung about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's normal. It's not. Yeah, we you, can't keep you can't do gotta be like, uh, mature enough to to see it as the entertainment it is and not internalize it. But it's the you know, you can say that with, with all the all the music from the, the gangster rap to the toxic to songs. The, the, the West Virginia these songs 
going back to our parents and what they listened to, even I, further than I that. I think they was even worse they sometimes. They were worse. Yeah. Then, like, some, you know how vicious some of them old dudes was? Like, how mean like, them Me and Mrs. Jones, and, 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 you know, you calling up whoever Barbara on the phone because you in love with her husband. Like, do we, do we hear the stuff that's been around for years? Just and leave it on a download. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what are, what are we being influenced by is my point. But, what but, is influencing our views on relationships? What is it? That's how we're getting into these toxic situations. Who are we allowing? What's governing our thoughts? And a lot of people are ready for that part of the conversation because that means well, accountability. Yeah. And that, you you touched on the big thing when you say what's governing our thoughts, though, because, you know, a lot of people... When we we talking about that, it's a lot of minds that's in the gutter, right? Like you, we we need to kind of elevate a little bit, start looking at things different. We stop you stop doing things the old way, like start approaching things in a more healthier sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that comes with a mind mind shift change, which is hard for most individuals because most people, yeah, it is it's like incredibly they incredibly you got to break the stereotypes. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to have an idea of what a positive, healthy relationship look like if you never actually experienced it or seen it firsthand. Like, you can hear people describe it all you want, but until you actually experience one, so you it's see a little it. weird. Yeah. yeah. You ever, I can, I seen, a, I seen a post recently where somebody said, when you're in that getting to know you stage, ask the person you're dating what their childhood was like, mm. what their relationship with their parents are like hold on let me take these notes go ahead because <laughs> it will tell you a lot about a person and their values and let them talk see a lot of people are afraid of that getting to know you stage of getting too deep because they're afraid of running people off but if somebody is run off by your honesty they're not for you anyway and if i gotta conceal hide and pretend to be somebody else and not share my truth in the hopes of keeping you that feels a little deceptive right. and i don't want to do that I'd rather you know up front, like, yeah, this was my experience. And here's how I, I feel about certain things. And this is what my relationship is like with my parents. and my, Because that tells you a lot about a person and how they view relationships. Mm -hmm. It's the very relationships they have with their family, their siblings, their parents. And everything may not be good, but that's when you ask probing questions. All right, so why do you not talk to your mom? Or why you don't bang with your pop? So, you know, whatever the case may be, or, you know, why do you admire your parents' relationship so much? Or why do you not? Like, asking those questions should be, should be to me, part of a normal getting to know you, because now we're getting past that I'm just physically attracted to yep. you stage. Now, and this is, again, when you're dating with intent. Now, if your intent is not to really, you just trying to have fun, those questions won't be asked. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of find yourself in what we like to, the, the world has coined situationships because now you're kind of dating. I don't know. We doing this, and you know, and it's like, but now you, and here, I'll take it a step further. Once you, you know, you start, and I know a lot of people going to disagree, <laughs> but I'll eat that. But once you start physically involving yourself with somebody, you taking on the energy, yeah. the demons, and whatever yeah, else yeah. they got going on inside yeah. of them. So please keep that in mind. Now you out here in entanglements. <laughs> in situationships with somebody and don't understand your own confusion because you sleeping with somebody who who got confusion within them and now you're trying to make sense of something and you can't because now your feelings are involved and the physical aspects are involved and and and, and, and now like i want more but i can't have more but y'all didn't have these conversations mm -hmm. y'all didn't talk about it y'all left right into the fun part mm -hmm. and now you're trying to backtrack and clean it up and that's a bigger mess mm -hmm. but again you know what do i know <clears throat> i know that because the, the world will tell you uh you know just go with it yolo you only live once have fun i'm like i used to feel that way yeah. but how many times do you have to get burnt spiritually emotionally or physically before you start realizing this is not a healthy way of approaching things if i really want to date with intent no again if that's not your intent well good luck have fun with that but if you have intent and in having a real relationship, serious conversations need to be had at the very beginning, not when we're in the middle of this. Controversy, controversy. <laughs> Here we go. About to cook it. <laughs> About to boil it. <laughs> Another major reason, and in the same vein of the OGs who put a lot of toxic shit within their music and all that, you know what I'm saying? There's certain powers that be, 
that, you know what I'm saying, if you listen to for entertainment value, fine, you know what I'm saying, shit. I get a little bit of straightening with a cold shower, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of folk out there who who takes their relationship advice from a nigga who said, "Okay, so we out of here." Tools to you, bitches. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, say that again, because I I, ain't I feel that. like I feel like a lot of people and their problems come from stem from taking relationship advice from a nigga who once rapped, "Okay, so we out of here." Toodles to you, bitches. <laughs> Who's fine with that? Drake. Yeah. Drake okay. Drake. Drake is the queen of toxicity. I meant the no. He's the queen yeah. of toxicity. He did it to himself. Drake he did it to himself. Toxicity. And I and I love you for Drake. I listen to Drake. I watch the grass of y'all. I'm I'm a, you know I've been around, but Aubrey Aubrey got some questionable things going on. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'll take it. I'll take it a step further. And I don't say this and don't take this lately, but I got a rule about who I take marital advice from. And this is not to not single people. But I'm not taking marital advice from nobody who ain't been in their marriage for more than 10 years and who is not happy. That's now, I could take the unhappy married person's example and learn not what to do but actual mm -hmm. marital advice i want some sage wisdom yeah. so i'm looking to those who are much older than me i have been blessed to have friends mm -hmm. who are in their 50s and 60s been married for 50 something years and happily married and listening to them be honest and talk openly last year preparing for my anniversary i was talking to a, um, a woman who's been married for 60 something years and when when she told me um, and she in her 60s, right? So she's been married about, I think she said 50 some years. She's in her late 60s. And she told me, you know, oh, man, for our anniversary of my husband, we did A, B, and C. And she gave me some advice. I never thought a 67-year-old woman would tell me to go get dressed up in a costume for my husband, but she did. And she, she told me all of the things that they do to keep their relationship spicy, how they work through problems, so on and so forth. And I was so floored and shocked that she was that open with me. And was that willing to be that honest? But I took that advice and internalized it because this is somebody I'm watching be successful in their marriage. Mm -hmm. Who you get your advice from matters. I and and for me, you know, we're biblical people. We we look to the Bible. We're going to look to the Bible for advice. So I prefer to get my advice from somebody who has those same alignments. I don't want my advice from somebody who maybe gets their advice from somebody else. I don't want that. I'm good. You have to you have to get advice from what aligns with your spirit and what you believe in because it may not work for you. And but you know, like, <laughs> you know, common sense would tell you, right, like, this is why people like Donald Trump and all these other billionaires can sell books and tell you how to start a successful company, regardless if they truly are that or not, right? But you... To some extent, you see them and you think it worked. They have a blueprint on how to be successful. So you're going to take advice from the dude that's a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire. Why you wouldn't take advice from the guy who failed at his last five business opportunities, right? <laughs> like you want to go with somebody who has a proven track record who works, right. and we should apply that to relationship advice just like we would apply. And not so, not so. I know I love a good quotable. I love a good quotable. I love a good caption. Okay, I love it. I love it. You know, how you go and feed me, but you still beefing with me. One of my favorite lines from Jake. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> I am not taking advice from, you know, it, it gets even better, even better. I don't care about famous people marriages. I ain't gonna hold you because they live in well above my pay grade. Okay. They got problems I'm never gonna be able to relate to because we're not even in the same tax bracket. And they be into stuff in entanglement and openness and stuff that I'm just not down for, okay? I'm not doing it. So they, when people kind of fashion their relationships after famous people, I, I want I want that power couple. I don't. I don't look to that stuff and be like, oh, that's what I want. Like, none of that. Because they had another stratosphere than me. We don't live in the same, we're not even the same universe. And just because they make a good song, you know, don't mean that they're happy in their marriages, relationships. And you see it play out in the tabloids all the time. So again, where are you getting your advice from? Who who is your role model? Those things matter.
Is it healthy what you're consuming? The people you're getting advice from, are they knowledgeable? Do they have the same goals as you in terms of, do they view marriage the same way as you? Do they view relationships the same way as you? Because I'm not going to go to somebody who's in a polyamorous relationship and ask them for advice on my monogamous relationship. That don't fly over here for me. That's but real. they might be able to help somebody who's in a polyamorous relationship because that lifestyle aligns to them. You get what I'm saying? Like, yep. you got to know where to look based upon what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you can't get that from everywhere or anybody. That's real. Alicia, let me ask y'all. Let me ask you and Jared a question. Um, how do you guys determine a happy relationship? Because it's easy for a couple to put on a mask of a happy relationship to the public. So how do you identify when a couple is truly happy? Like through your married eyes? I don't, cause I, cause there's never no real way to know, and, and I don't like. I, I see what I see. Oh. Unless you tell me, I got an answer for it. Though. Oh well, for me, I don't know. Like I, unless I, I don't. <laughs> You don't know, like, and I agree with that, but I think for me, the only true telltale sign is longevity, right? Mm. Unless you find out at the end of the day, like, I'm just trying to outlive you for the life insurance or something like that. No! Like, longevity, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, I, like I, I, it happened. Like, yeah, like they that. made the war, the war of the roses was a real movie. I don't know if y'all ever seen that, but no, they was fighting over no. a crib. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's people who do that in real life. They outlast each other for the bread or something of material. But outside of that, time and longevity tells me, like, even if your relationship ain't perfect, y'all figured out a way to keep it going. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, have, you have a blueprint for what works for y'all. How you interact with your mate, I think, is a never-telling sign. I look at, are you the type of person who goes out of your way to be away from your spouse all the time? Mm -hmm. Or do you like spending time with your spouse? Um, and it's not that you and your spouse have to be up underneath each other all the time. Everybody's entitled to having their own lives and all that stuff. But I look at if I got free time, right? And, and, and I see you got free time and you forever trying to go out and brunch every weekend. Or you let's go hit the club, let's go do this, that, and the third every weekend. Like, when when you going out with your husband? When you going out with your wife? Like, I'm going to start looking at stuff like that. If you constantly telling me we need to go out and go somewhere without our mates, I'm going to be looking at your little side. I'm like, why are you trying to spend so much time away from your mate? Like, mm -hmm. those kinds of things are kind of telling sometimes. And again, not that you got to be up underneath your spouse all the time, but I am a firm believer, and your spouse should absolutely be your best friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if they're not, that's another questionable thing. Not that I don't have somebody who was my best friend that I grew up with, but that relationship shifted and changed when Jared became my best friend. Because there's no way in the world you live with somebody for the rest of their life and you're not, they're not your best friend. Like, that's right. insane to me. Right. How, how they not? So if you, if you say things like, hey, my best friend or something, like, I look at little stuff like that. But again, there, I don't know that there's any real way to know, unless you know a couple really well, just enough, or you guys have that kind of relationship where somebody tells you, like, yeah, I'm not happy in my relationship. Because anything can look like something. And it doesn't mean it's actually what it is. Yeah. And, you know, the, the last thing I'll say about it is, like, growth is the real important part of it. Because, but Link, think about it from, like, a, a vegetation standpoint, right? Like, when anything stop, stops growing, it dies. So, like, your relationship has to continue to grow, has to continue to evolve, it has to get better. If it's not getting better, it could only be getting worse. Yeah. If it's just getting worse, how long before you're going to want to be out? So, in order to maintain... Happiness is something like Jetty said it at the beginning. Is is work like your relationship is work? Maintaining happiness, maintaining love, maintaining romance, all of that stuff is constant work. Like if you're not putting in that work, if you're not making sure it's going to be a success, it, it's going to. That's when the cracks is going to start to show. That's when we're going to see the unhappiness. And that's when you're going to wake up after five, ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty-five years and be like, "Yo, I want out of this joint. This yeah. don't work for me." You know? Yeah. And you you know you brought up at the beginning that that podcast was about uh, married people being more concerned about infidelity versus single people. I wanted to make a point that as a single person, you can't be worried about infidelity because you're single. Mm -hmm. So there's no infidelity. Mm -hmm. Like if you're worried about somebody yeah. being, are you in a relationship? Because if you're in a relationship, then you're no longer single. We can talk about that. Um, no, however, no, no, no. <laughs> so, so it, it's either you're in one or you're not. Because if you're not, then it's not called infidelity. It's called y'all are sleeping around because that's what single people do. Um, versus, you know, married people are more concerned with infidelity than yes, that makes more sense. 
married people would be concerned about infidelity because at that point, if you are stepping outside of your marriage, that is a concern. Um, I cannot speak for everybody's marriage. I never would try to. The circle of friends that I keep, that is not a concern. You know what I mean? In the circle of friends that I keep. But that's not to say that I haven't experienced it or have seen it or talked about it or any of those things. What I will say, you asked me when we were prepping for this, um, what do you do to kind of keep infidelity out of the marriage? Yeah, like, what yeah. kind of work do you do to do that? And, you know, something that I was thinking about, I had gotten some advice a while back about um, when you go to work, keep a picture of your spouse at your desk, right? Or on your desktop or on your computer. Um, and something that I've noticed is a lot of times you go into the workspace, you know, you, you strike up those uh, friendships with your coworkers sometimes. Not me, I hate my coworkers. No, not real. Not real. I'm just kidding. I don't hate my coworkers, but it's not that type of vibe. We ain't close like that. It's not that kind of party. But you can. You spend enough time with, because you're spending eight hours out of your day, right, at your job. So it's now you're having to be mindful. Things that I've noticed are my relationships with men, even your, like, Jetty's my brother, like, Jetty's family, but, like, does my husband know my male friends, right? Mm -hmm. Does he know them? Are they, are they cool? Um, do people know I'm married? Uh -huh. My kids, my family, they pass it on my desk, they everywhere, you know, my ring is on my hand at all times. Um, I'm careful, and I had to learn this lesson, there was no always a lesson that I knew, but I'm careful about how much I share with someone of the opposite sex uh -huh. about my marriage. When I'm having problems, it's not another nigga's business to know uh -huh. me and my husband are having problems. You know what I mean? Like, things like that. Like, am I protecting my marriage with my behavior? Um, because Ooh. here's the thing. There are people like out here who will know you're married and they don't care. They're looking for that crap to kind of ease in. They looking for that weak spot and weak moment, and they'll and they'll they'll even aid you. I'm like, yeah, I'm so happy for you and your marriage, but they they making little comments mm -hmm. or jokes. If somebody's making little comments and stuff, are you prepared to nip that in the bud? It cut people off when necessary. Mm -hmm. um, if your mate is feeling some type of way about somebody else's presence in your life, are you willing to cut nip it, it in the bud? Right. It's it's like. Because who are you more concerned about at this point? Yep. Like, these are things mm. that you, if you lack the maturity, you may not see the issue there. And a lot of people, I don't want to be with somebody who's possessive or all that. No, nah, it's not about possession. It's really not about that. It's about, does my mate feel safe and secure? If they don't feel safe and secure in a relationship, I'm not doing Facts. my job. Facts. And that's it. And that means it's my job to make sure they feel safe and secure. Now, if I'm doing everything I can and my mate still don't feel secure, that, there's nothing I can do about that. But am I doing everything I can to make sure that my mate feels safe and secure? And the other way that you can protect your marriage from infidelity is don't stop romancing your partner just because you're married. The sex should not stop. <laughs> the, the, the flirting should not stop. Stop. Uh -huh. The next day to not stop. That energy you put into me when you was bagging me is the same energy I want. Now, granted, yes, we have kids, things, you know, people go to work and all that stuff, but throughout the day, you know, check in. I love, it lights up my day when my husband texts me just to send me a cute little kissy face emoji. Um, I don't even lie to y'all. Like, I will send him a spicy picture from the bathroom just, you know, just so you know. Yeah. You know, what I'm yeah. home. Like, to me, stuff like that Facts. matters. It matters. Like, I don't, throughout the day, we don't got to talk 24-7, but I want you to know you're on my yes. mind. Women, for us, we want to be told we're beautiful, but I want him to know you look good to me today or you smelt good to me, and I really enjoyed myself with you last night. Like, jog his memory through the day. Like, little things like that matter. Mm -hmm. The energy you put while you were dating, while you were trying to get somebody in your bed, should be the same energy you are giving them to keep them there. Yep. If, yep. if you're not going to keep that energy, please know that you are creating space for somebody else to come in. And it may not even be intentional, but if you're not paying attention, I guarantee you somebody else is. The wall and man. I guarantee you, uh, and let me tell you, I guarantee you people do not care about your marriage. If you don't care about your marriage, other people said definitely don't care about your marriage. And they don't care about disrupting you. And they will tell you all sorts of lines. Mm -hmm. And if you got a spouse who is unhappy, because maybe they're lacking in something, it's going to sound real good to them. Mm -hmm. It's going to sound real good when that person is giving them energy that they want from you. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You gotta keep that energy. You can't let that energy slide. Fact. Right, Super fat, yo. I love that. That's actually a great way to kind of end the show. <laughs> nah, for real. For real. I honestly don't want to even <laughs> dip off on that. So, um, I guess I, I kind of want to end the show or see you. What are you guys, what are y'all's keys or what do you feel like the keys are to maintaining a healthy relationship and creating that honesty and keeping that honesty within your relationship? What are the keys to a healthy relationship? Yeah, yeah, my um, I, I don't. I think the. I yeah. I think what what it is is like really just finding different ways to support each other. You know what I mean? Be finding ways that you can be that balance for that other person. Like where they're weak, how can you be strong? How can you help? build them up where they feel weak you know what i mean like things like that i think that's what's important like i saw a girl earlier today a woman excuse me earlier today she said um she went up to her her uh boyfriend or husband or whatever and was like what can i do to make your day a little bit easier today is there anything i can do to make your day easier today i think stuff like that needs to be normalized i think that's the key to a successful healthy relationship is figuring out ways to be to look to be supportive like jetty mentioned you know i work nine hours today but when i come home i know my lady who's been here with the baby needs my support now i gotta figure out i gotta take some of the load off of her you know mm-hmm. what i mean and him doing that is going to promote her doing that for him and then you get that ebb and flow of, of healthiness and success and that, that balance that relationships need. Mm-hmm. I think um, keys for me are, you know, keeping God first in our relationship, you know, and communication is definitely another one, open communication. Um, there has to be a sense of safety in order for you to communicate. Because mm-hmm. if you don't feel safe communicating, you're going to withhold, right? Mm-hmm. And that's going to create problems down the line. So, I feel like creating a safe space. The world is rough enough um, on on my husband. The world is rough enough, but we got to step outside these doors. Home should be a sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to do is create a space of safety and sanctuary for him to always know that you're safe here with me. Um, and so here's how it's going to work. And also just keeping in mind that it does require work. There's got to be selflessness. There's no room for selfishness. I will scream that at the top of my lungs for the rest of my life. It's no longer about me. And the thing that he said about giving, when he gives, it automatically compels me to give right back. Mm-hmm. So now it's become a, a reciprocity there. It's like he's giving, I'm giving. I The more he gives to me, I'm like, well, Dad, like, what can I do for you? And it's just a natural cause and effect because I see you going hard for me. It made me want to go even harder for you. And the one thing I always say about him that I love the most is when I was going through the worst of my health conditions, um, and it was about a five, six-year span, and I was at my lowest, um, he never once made me feel like I was a burden. Mm-hmm. That right there. Um, did something to me and did something for me to the point now that I'm back in a better space of health. I'm constantly like, how can I make, you know, and he always tells me that's not something you have to make up for me or anything, but that fuels and motivates me all the time. I'm like, how can I give back? Because what he did for me was priceless. Um, I watched a lot of people out here talk about how their mates have left them at their low or made them feel worse, and he did something the exact opposite. So that has only ignited and made that love for him burn even stronger, even harder. That makes me just want to go hard for him. So just keep giving to one another, and it'll be a nice little cycle of reciprocity. And I think that's really the biggest key in marriage. Did that experience deepen y'all love to an extent that it probably wouldn't have been deep into had you're not going through it? I think so. I mean, you know, we've been together 18 years, so we've seen a lot in the last 18 years. But I think that um, when you say those vows through sickness and health, when you're young, no one ever considers sickness and health are going to occur while you're still young. You know, you kind of think it's off in the future when I'm in my 50s, 60s, 70s. We didn't anticipate it was going to happen right after us having our last child. Um, And I do think that was a huge test for us. And I think how he 
showed up is why we passed that test. I don't know that it would have deepened the way it did had he not shown up in the way that he did because he was able to step in and love me when I couldn't even love myself. And that was him being able to balance out something I wasn't able to do for myself. So I, I definitely think it, it played a major role in us deepening and strengthening that relationship because where I've seen a lot a lot of people in my situation feel very isolated and feel like they didn't have that support. I got to grow in a very weird space where most people would not. I got to actually grow in that space. So I definitely think we played a huge part in where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. right. Daddy, how about you? I am going to I'm going to echo a sentiment that my lady usually parts with me whenever she drops me off to work or just throughout the day in reference to work. Protect your heart space. Protect your heart. Protect mm -hmm. your heart space. Protect your heart. Uh, I feel that there is a, a more selfish narrative to consider or that is considered when people hear that. But, you know, you know, just to take it back earlier in the conversation when we talked about when you're in a real relationship, you know, to become one. So if we're one and I'm protecting my heart space and I'm protecting my heart, I'm protecting you. I'm protecting because you're a part, part of my heart. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, if this is situations like my lady and I, we talk all the time, you know, whether it's, you know, silly stuff, whether it's serious stuff, whatever the case may be, it's my job when my lady talks to me for me to hear her from a space of, of not only you know trying to just respond or you know just to to placate her or just be here as a stand-in if you will but to understand where she's coming from so that she she feels she feels heard wanted seen you know so it's not just two beings just occupying space with each other. No, it's, it's okay. You're speaking to me. So in essence, it's like my conscience talking to me. You know what I mean? She's seeing things that I might not be able to see regarding myself because I'm too busy doing whatever I'm doing, whether it's at the job, whether it's here, um, painting, or whether it's even with our daughter when I'm just, I might be too busy with certain aspects of life, you know, my conscious is telling me, hey, pay attention to this. And what happens if you, if you don't listen to your conscious? You know what I mean? Typically wrong. You fuck up. Typically you fuck, fuck up if you don't yep. listen to your conscious. If you don't listen to your intuition, you know, you fuck up. More more times than not, you don't listen to your intuition, you fuck up. You know what I mean? So protect your space. I like that. I'm a, I'm a pretty much echo the sentiments that you three is, uh, said throughout the night uh, from my closing word. Being uh, the single person that's one here, you know, like I'm I'm in that space now, Jetty, where I'm, I'm learning to protect my heart and kind of just take my time to kind of see what is best for me, you know. Uh, one of my biggest flaws personally has been the refusal to listen to my gut. So now I'm just kind of sitting in the space of just Trusting my gut, you know, trusting, you know, what my what my soul is telling me to be patient, you know, take my time, really just kind of invest in learning people for who they are before I, I I intend to invest more of my energy into them, you know, like kind of see like is it even worth the investment before I make the you know the down payment on like hey I want to take this time to get to know you so. Um, for me, you know, like that journey is that journey is that journey, you know, like it's got its ebbs and flows, it's got its highs and lows. And, you know, when I talk to uh, you guys, you know, like hearing how y'all relationships are positive, it do give me hope that, you know, maybe I could find a positive relationship myself, you know, because for the most part, my relationships have been uh, a bit toxic, you know, due to myself and due to them, you know, but it's been a nice blend of both, you know, so like when I hear your story, they give me perspective of things I need to work on within myself, you know, before I'm ready for a relationship. So thank you guys for tonight. Absolutely. All the right. And just, yes. and look, Dad, remember the it is possible, but you got to hold space for that. Mm -hmm. So don't clutter it up with stuff 
right? Don't 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 clutter it up with space fillers. Leave space for what's supposed to be yours. All right, all right, all right. All right. I gotta figure out how to do that, you know. Like, um, definitely gotta figure out how to do it. That's probably like my next biggest hurdle, you know. Like, uh, <laughs> let's talk about abstinence next yeah. time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give too much juice up on the camera. Like, <laughs> so yeah. you need to have a, a heart to heart. You know? <laughs> need another heart to heart soon, though. Real soon. Like, I gotta get some. I gotta get some. I gotta get some shit off my chest. <laughs> Before we get off out of here, I need you guys to let everybody know where they can find y'all. You know, if you got anything going on, you know, let people know what's happening. Well, as you see, you know, he left to go tend to the kids. You can catch us <laughs> on A and the Skirt Day podcast. Y'all can catch you at APY Blog on here, uh, at APYoungBlog.com. He sometimes even guest writes on my blog, so you guys can check out his writing there as well. Um, but that's it. Not nothing fantastical going on. We just out here living, raising kids. Y'all can check in about Jack's first little dance. Off. Hey. We'll update you. We'll see how that goes. Absolutely. Hey. Uh, no, right? yeah. yeah. It's always important. I remember my first dance. I got my first kiss there and everything. I was a man that night. Uh, well, I'm see? not. I'm not see? prepared for see? that. See? <laughs> there won't see? be any of that. See? See, mm -mm. See? Mm -mm. They're, they're six and seven. We're gonna we're gonna let that rock. You know, we're not there yet. We we're not doing that. See? My first kiss was ten, but he he not too far off though. Like, see, he, he See, better that's be. the shit I'm talking about. It's the shit, it's the shit I'm talking be. about right here. It's the shit I'm talking about right mm. here. It's gonna be one grown man with a little six, seven year old in my hand, full wedgie mode. Like, this ain't what you think, partner. And, and I'm going to get into it. This ain't what you want. It with, no. yeah, I'm going to get into it with little homie pops and, and moms. And I'm going to be like, listen, look, how you want to do this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> kids still in hand. <laughs> Briefs. Six <laughs> inches above head. Like, how you want to do this? This ain't happening. I try not to be that, that helicopter mom, but I, you know, I, no, we're not there yet. <laughs> Y'all gonna be kids. Go jump up and down off beat to the music, but that's about right. it. <laughs> right, right. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Daddy, yeah. yeah, you wanna shout everybody out? Oh, <laughs> uh, you already know. You know, first and foremost, APJ, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate Absolutely. you. We love you. We cherish you. And we, we we just are so humbled every time you're able to grace us with your presence. Thank you, thank candid, you. And candid candor, you know what I'm saying, and the wisdoms, the gems of wisdom, rather that you that you drop or whatnot. We appreciate you. We love you. You know, as far as um, I, you know, I'm a simple guy. Follow me on PBM Talk Show first and foremost. You know what I'm saying. Also, make sure that you follow me on Jetty A Track. You know what I mean. And last but definitely not least. Raise it up to the Holy Grail at the very least. All for you, I and I, that's my ladies page and myself. You know, we're gonna have some content, more content put up on there. You know what I'm saying? So so check in and see what we do in our day to day lives regarding us being parents and regarding us being partners. Thanks. Absolutely. You're missing one. Auntie Auntie Apothecary. Okay. Oh yeah, Auntie's apothecary. Listen, I'm not missing it, brother. I got some things in the tub, baby. I got some, <laughs> I got some smoke in the chimney, boy. Like, come on, baby. Come on, baby. But you know what? I do appreciate that. So for that being said, also for those out here listening, if y'all need y'all teas, y'all y'all great blends of teas to get y'all through through the day for the caffeinated, whether y'all just need something chill to just match y'all lax and y'all vibration, or whether it might just be that time of the month for the ladies and they just need something that's going to help to support them and, and carry them through. Auntie's Apothecary has all you need for every one of those circumstances to make sure that you are at your fullest through every transition of womanhood and every season. And also for the men too, because let's keep it real. Like, say, if you're a grown ass man and you don't like tea, I don't know. I ain't going. <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I need some carry tea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man.
I'm going to follow that up by saying, guys, I got movies at Fly Mouth Catering. Tap in for that. Got y'all covered with that. It's fresh, delicious, nutritious, made with uh, fresh organic fruit. Got a lot of flavors for you guys to tap into. So definitely slide over to Fly Mouth Catering. Uh, also, next Saturday, I'll be on hand at the Imperfect Art Gallery to help with their second night of their art exhibit. So if you're available and you're in the Philadelphia area, slide through. That's March 18th at 8 o'clock. Uh, Imperfect Art Gallery at 5539 Germantown Avenue. It's going to be art display, music, food. Uh, just a good time, and it's 420 friendly, so, you know, for my smokers, come through, you know, and let's have a good time. Also, uh, March 19th, I'm going to be in New Jersey um, with the assistance of Show to the Friend, uh, Friends of the Show, Exhibit A, for her open mic ceremony. So, if you're in New Jersey at that time, slide through. You know, we're going to have a lot of guests that be an interview from poets, rappers, singers. So, we got a few things that positive about maybe to say and tune with. And make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel, the Patreon, the Twitter, and the Instagram. And stay up to date with all things PVM. And that's all I got for tonight, you know. Right on. Right on. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for having us. As always, it's a blast chatting with y'all. And we will check in with y'all next time. I know, right? Everybody enjoy your night. I love y'all. Y'all stay blessed. Stay safe. To the audience, thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate all the comments. We love y'all. And y'all enjoy y'all evening, you know. Uh, spend time with your loved ones. Enjoy your vices. Stay safe. And we'll see y'all next Sunday. This has been Positive Vibes, maybe. PBM, the talk show. I'm your host, Dante Dan Smith. We'll see y'all next Sunday.